Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We've got a big update today in the world of Palantir's AIP platform. Now, they announced this a couple of weeks ago, and this is essentially their artificial intelligence platform that they want to sell to enterprises, to governments, basically to the entire world. It is a chat-based user interface, very similar to ChatGPT, but the large language models that are integrated into um, Pounter's AIP are trained on data that is within the enterprise slash government slash organization that Pounter works with. And so the data is the differentiator that makes the LLMs, the large language models, actually be able to be trained in a way that produces the business intelligence, the business results, the productivity, the outcomes that an enterprise is looking for when they implement, uh, implement a solution like this into their business. And the security of the AIP and the governance and the controls that Pounter gives is one of the key differences between its AIP platform and a lot of other companies that are trying to sell this into uh, the commercial space. Today, they released a video that was about how they could use AIP for government and defense. And I don't wanna waste any more time. I wanna get into it while we start analyzing it. This was one of the most really insane videos I've ever seen in my entire life because the entire premise of it is how can a soldier or someone in the battlefield or you know someone just navigating uh, mission critical situations ask a simple question, get a meaningful response and immediately take action without having to go through hundreds of hurdles because of Pounder's AIP platforms. So let's get into it and then we'll talk about the business implications for what this means for defense in the military. Before we get into the video, real quick, please subscribe to dailypalantir.com slash subscribe. It's my daily newsletter covering Pounder every day, Monday through Friday. Please, 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 if you have not subscribed already, subscribe to that newsletter. It would mean the world to me. We're trying to get to 2,000 subs by the end of this month. We have like four days. We're at 1,800 subs, so it would be awesome if we get 2,000 subscribers on that newsletter every single day covering Pounder. Thanks so much, and let's enjoy the video. AIP unleashes the power of large language models and cutting edge AI for defense and military organizations. LLMs and algorithms must be controlled in this highly regulated and sensitive context to ensure that they are used in a legal and ethical way. AIP's capabilities make the use of LLMs and AI possible in the military context through three core pillars. Now real quick, legal and ethical are the two key words in the context of defense and military. Right. So like when you sell an AI solution or an AI platform to the defense sector, to the military sector, right to governments, they have to make sure that the data is classified. It stays where it needs to be stayed and that the people that are supposed to have control over it have control over it. I don't think there's any company on the planet in the software space that is able to give the complete and utter guarantee that their data will be safe and will be secured and will still produce business outcome results without compromising security other than Palantir. Obviously, it has IL-6 level security clearance. Like, I think Palantir is the one to be able to get it done, which means in the context of defense spending, if, com if governments around the world want to accept a product like this, what does that and what could that do for Palantir's overall sales to the government sector? First, AIP deploys LLMs and AI across any network, from classified networks to devices on the tactical edge. AIP connects highly sensitive and classified intelligence data to create a real-time representation of your environment. Second, AIP's security features let you define what LLMs and AI can and cannot see and what they can and cannot do with safe AI and handoff functions. Third, AIP brings industry-leading guardrails to control, govern, and trust in the AI. As operators and AI take action in platform, AIP generates a secure digital record of operations. These capabilities are crucial for mitigating significant legal, regulatory, and ethical risks posed by LLMs and AI in sensitive and classified settings. In this demo, we'll explore how AIP powers responsible, effective, and compliant AI advantage. We start with a military operator responsible for monitoring activity within Eastern Europe. They've just received an alert that military equipment is amassed in a field 30 kilometers from friendly forces. AIP leverages large language models to allow operators to quickly ask questions. Show me more details. Now again, uh, you know, even a couple months ago, it was impossible to just be like, show me more details and for the software to understand what show me more details means, put those string of words together and then actually give a response because it, un it interprets what that means. This is you know, basically what CodeStrap has been talking about really for the past six, seven months is that what ChatGPT has done is created a different relationship that humans have to knowledge and information. And you know, the best businesses in the world, they control knowledge and information. It's why Google is what it is. Apple, Facebook, they are what they are because they control the means of knowledge and information. Well, if the paradigm switches, 
in insofar as you don't have to go to like a platform, a company to be able to get the information. You can use your own data to train a large language model, the right, the AI software that didn't really exist, you know, 10 years ago to be able to just give you the answer in and of itself because it's artificially smart enough to give you and you would argue more than artificially smart enough to give you a good answer then the whole paradigm of how we think about information and how we get that information changes. So just saying something as simple as show me more details and getting a response versus having to go to like a tab that says details, that changes everything. And it's gonna get even crazier as we go through this video. They ask what enemy units are in the region and leverage AI to build out a likely unit formation. What enemy military unit is in the region? Our operator requests additional imagery to build a more complete picture of the potential enemy equipment on the ground. Task new imagery for this location at a resolution of one meter or higher. AIP surfaces the option to deploy a nearby drone to collect video. Now this is insane, right? So not only did it say use satellite imagery to find me a certain area, now it's saying show me the options on how to locate this area at a, at a resolution of one meter or higher, right? So specific specifications for understanding the satellite imagery in and of itself. This is only possible because of the tactical edge, edge AI, that Palantir software, the meta constellation that it's you know been touting for a very long time. Those technologies are even integrated with AIP in order, which is like this really unique sort of circular um, a way in which are like symbiotic way in which all the products relate to each other to be able to now get to this next iteration of what defense will look like, which is asking a large language model for an answer. And so the fact that it's able to give you suggestions just by typing in some words and those suggestions are real because it's getting data from something that it's trained on within the enterprise, within the government in and of itself, and all of that is classified and none of that can leak because of Palantir's protection for security and ethical and legal reasons to keep it safe. That's incredible. And I, I just, you know, just one man taking an outside look at this, this is something that you could argue is incredibly, like incredibly valuable to every government in the world that would be able to have access to this because how much more effective and efficient would it make your soldiers on the battlefield? Task the MQ-9 to capture video of this location. The footage confirms a potential threat. The drone footage shows an enemy T-80 main battle tank. Generate three courses of action to target this enemy equipment. The operator uses AIP to generate three possible courses of action to target this enemy equipment. And this is the big deal, right? Now it's giving you a suggestion on how to actually deal with the enemy without having to, without you to think of it, it tells you what to do. And now you just have to be able to get a uh, confirmation that these are the right things to do. But all the thinking, I mean, like within minutes, you know what to do. And the question is now, how fast can you execute it? And Next, they use AIP to automatically send these options up the chain of command. Send these three options to my commander for review. Let's look under the hood. As our operator poses questions, the LLM is traversing a data foundation of real-time information, integrated from across public and classified sources. Data is automatically tagged and protected by classification markings, and AIP enforces which parts of the organization the LLM has access to, while respecting an individual's permissions, role, and need to know. For example, the LLM shown cannot access soldier health data by policy. Every response from AIP retains links back to the underlying data records, propagating the correct classifications as well as enabling transparency for the user, who can investigate as necessary. This functionality is critical and essential to responsible use of LLMs and AI in military contexts. So right here, they're showing the kind of the back end of what's happening under the hood that's allowing the LLM to be able to give you a meaningful response, and they're explaining why there is access controls and security preferences based on who has access to the data. Our commander must now assess the three possible courses of action generated by AIP to neutralize the buildup of enemy equipment. The system highlights key information for each course of action to assist decision making, such as the time required and status of supplies. Our commander selects a course of action. Approve course of action three. AIP has established which unit is closest to the enemy tank. Our commander can now begin to develop an operational plan for Team Omega. First, the commander uses AIP to assess the battlefield. 
Analyze the battlefield considering a striker vehicle and a platoon sized unit. An automated terrain analysis model processes all existing geospatial intelligence to understand unit maneuverability. From here, AIP suggests. That's incredible. I mean, that is unbelievable. The optimal route based on the unit's composition and the traversability of the terrain. Generate a route from Team Omega to the enemy equipment. Then, our commander validates the unit's supply of the munition needed to engage the enemy equipment. How many Javelin missiles does Team Omega have? Next, our commander wants to disrupt enemy communications. This will allow ground forces to more safely maneuver and help ensure that enemy equipment stays in position. AIP automatically identifies and pairs all of the validated enemy communication nodes with a disruption capability. Assign jammers to each of the validated high-priority communications targets. Targets are paired and ready to execute. Our commander instructs AIP to stand by before sending orders. Finally, our commander uses AIP to summarize and then submit the operational plan for the elected course of action. Summarize the operational plan. Submit. Let's look under the hood again. Many of these steps required a deep understanding of military doctrine, logistics, and battle dynamics. AIP is interoperable with existing and future capabilities and connects LLMs with trusted military and national security models, including computer vision, advanced position and navigation, effects pairing, and simulation, while accommodating standard military decision-making procedures. AIP secures handoff between these models, including models deployed at the edge, while respecting model access controls. This empowers military organizations to use LLMs and other models in concert to enable reasoning through different scenarios and courses of action safely and at scale. An electronic warfare specialist initiates the jamming operation. Initiate jamming operation. AIP confirms the jamming order has been initiated. With enemy communication disrupted, our ground forces are cleared to move into position and destroy the enemy equipment. Let's look under the hood one last time to better understand how AIP was able to safely support this time-sensitive military operation. In the AIP control panel, organizations set the guardrails for models, including how the model interacts with classification markings, as well as which actions, tasks, and workflows the AI is trusted to recommend or carry out. They can also define protective safety and quality controls around model inputs and outputs. A detailed activity monitor captures all prompts, responses, and decisions, seamlessly mapping AI-driven actions back to the data that powered them. This was imperative for the safe and ethical use of LLMs and AI for our operation. All right, there you go. That is Palantir's AIP software being used in real time for defense and military and giving an example of what this would look like. Now, look, I think there's a couple of implications of this. Number one, uh, the first thing to understand about this is that I've never seen a product like this for the defense and military space. And let's just say, you know, Devil's Advocate, ChatGPT, Microsoft, uh, some other software companies want to sell a product like this to the commercial enterprise. I will give the argument that Microsoft's version of ChatGPT for business may be a little bit different than Palantir's version of AIP for enterprises. And maybe because Microsoft has better sales and distribution, they're able to sell it in a better way to the commercial enterprises, right? Even though the biggest problem, right, is the security and, and, and sort of uh, the ethics of, of, of securing that data. When it comes to selling it to the government, I think there is no one better than Palantir that's going to be able to get that job done. And that is a very big business if governments start to embrace that they need to use AI in a way that allows them to establish themselves not only on the battlefield, but to protect their entire organizations integrated through something like an AIP chat-based user interface that is very simple to be able to use. I mean, just someone watching it, you type something in, you get an answer. And so when it comes to commercial uh, use cases of AIP versus government use cases of AIP, I think both can be very big for Palantir, but having seen this video, it doesn't look like there's any other software company in the world that could build something like this with all of the levels of governance and security that are necessary to be able to do this for the government. 
and you know c3 ai is not doing it i don't think microsoft's necessarily doing it at google you know they don't even want to take up contracts with with the dod so it seems like this is palantir's market to take the question is can palantir sell it uh to governments in a meaningful way and i, I the, the reason a lot of stuff is going on with russia and ukraine and palantir as you saw in some of the previous videos is not charging for that is because this is where the money is made right this aip licensing out this software to hundreds of governments around the world all the nato countries around the world that's where they're going to make their money. They're not going to make their money trying to get, you know, a couple bucks out of Ukraine when they're in the middle of a war. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do is showcase, hey, here's the software, here's the platform. I mean, I would be shocked if you, Ukraine is not using the AIP right now, right? Even if it's in its beta stages because of how sensitive and, and timely their missions are. And if they are using it, and if it works and it's effective, the best marketing for Palantir ever is if Ukraine wins this war, because then every country will be afraid that if they don't use what Ukraine did to win this war and they don't have tactical nuclear weapons, then they're going to be at a so fundamentally you know, unique software disadvantage and that Palantir can make up that gap. And we know defense budgets across the world are meant to be spent on things like this, and they're essentially unlimited because they need to protect uh, the sovereignty of the nations that they reside in. So... This is a big deal for me. That's the first case. I think the government, I think governments around the world are going to buy this software when they realize how powerful it is. The question is if Pounder can sell it, and the question also is if Ukraine can win the war. The second thing that I think is really important about this is understanding, you know, what this really means for the battlefield. I saw some people on Twitter call this like an episode of Black Mirror, where you're typing things in and you're just getting answers, and then you know you're you're destroying enemy tanks. I, you know, I'm sympathetic to that point of view, but ChatGPT in and of itself is Black Mirror, right? I can say write me a five-page article about blah blah blah, and I'll just get the answer. Like that to me is Black Mirror already. The, 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 the people that are saying this is unethical to me, this is just a question of do you believe that countries should be able to defend themselves in war? And you know, if you, if you, if, if you don't think this is ethical, then you don't think war is ethical in and of itself, which is like, all right, fine. Yeah, no one wants to have a war, but it happens. When someone invades their country, you've got to be prepared. And if software creates an advantage and the user interface around how software and the paradigm by which we interact with information creates an even better advantage because those LLMs are trained and they can give you answers in seconds, then you got to use that software. You got to win, right? You cannot let the uh, adversary win. And there are a lot of adversaries and there are a lot of Chinese defense contractors and Russian defense contractors working on trying to create this type of software. Palantir's got to beat those people if you believe in protecting Western values at the end of the day. So... This is very exciting to me. Uh, it's a question of how much Palantir can sell it, but look, it's a big deal. It, it, I mean, that defense video is one of the best videos I've ever seen from Palantir in terms of showcasing how their software for a regular person could be utilized. Like a lot of videos I've seen with the ontology and Apollo at the end, and I'm still kind of confused about it, but this is like, yeah, show me the tanks. Here's the tanks. Okay, do this. All right, here, I'm going to do this. Very simple. That's the way the world is going, and now it's just a question of if Palantir can sell this to multiple governments around the world. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think about Pounter's AIP. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video.